من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم My beloved siblings and respected family members, when we share the oath of allegiance, the sin declaration of faith, being Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, being that we all share. The oath in worshiping Allah and Allah alone. And that we also share the oath of allegiance to the example and its perfection that he gave to Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. How perfect is the life of the believer when goodness is upon him or her he says praise be to Allah all praise is due to Allah all gratitude is due to Allah all submissiveness is due to Allah for this goodness, this blessing that he has brought. And when calamity afflicts the believer, he or she says, this is the way Allah Ta'ala decreed it, and bear it with patience. My beloved respected siblings in Islam, any way, anything less than such is considered proof of disbelief at that moment. It's that simple. If one receives goodness and they are boastful or even self self-claiming it to be theirs, I'm the one who did this. It is associating with Allah because Allah alone has the power to do. Allah alone has the ability to decree and change his decree as he will. Allah alone gave us life, sustains us, and give us death and revival. Calamity falls. How many of us keep it together and say this is how Allah decreed it? We always find a reason to blame something or someone other than ourselves. We always have a way of justifying our feelings because of what has happened. We tend to forget that we seek in the protection of Allah and Allah alone with absolute certainty. And for the moment we've forgotten that this calamity could have been worse. There have been calamities that have stricken others that are worse than this one. We disbelieve in the fact that this was Allah's decree. And we no longer retain our patience in the matter, and therefore we have no faith. When we lose the patience, we lose the faith. When we, when we lost the patience in the instant where we said it was our own doing, that's why we gained the goodness. We lost our faith in Allah. We lost our submissiveness to Allah. Iyaka na'budu. 
It became a show for us. It became a way to self-promote us. Do not blame the television. Blame the system that put the television there. The information that is being placed in there, the show, encouraging. Show what you've done. You deserve to be recognized. Do more, do more, do more. As if there is no submissiveness to the one who truly does. And I used to be a practicing Muslim. Now, I don't practice anymore. The very verbiage that the Quran says, There are those who say that they believe in Allah and the day of judgment, but they do not believe. And what is proven that they do not believe is their actions, their deeds. What is proven that they do not believe is what they become most habitual in saying and in doing. I cannot believe that this happened to me. Why does this happen to me? Why? Should I be the one to take the brunt of this? Why would God do this to me? We're losing the patience, losing the faith. And we look at the circumstance in which you and me, small Muslim race community, we say what? Why? Where, who is all of this happening to? Does it mean anything to me? What do I have to do with this? The more you and I say so, the more we see less in our, in our message, the more we see less in our responsibility to say to ourselves, and to one another, and to remind each other of patience, and to remind each other to be thankful for what Allah Ta'ala has given us, and remain patient with it. Because there are some Muslims who are not even able to do what you and I are doing today. And knowing that, having hope in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala's reward, that because of the fact that we are thankful to Him, we are saying, praise be to Allah, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu increases us because he says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَذِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are thankful to me, then I will increase you. وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ If you deny. And then we look at the case where we could have been in a less fortunate situation. And we say to ourselves, Allah has protected us from that. MashaAllah. And we remain at faith. We remain encouraging ourselves and one another with piety, with taqwa, with sincerity. For the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then when we see every single day, there's not a single day you and me can wake up, turn on or listen in to the news and nothing is going on. It's all peaceful. We cannot look forward to the day when we will wake up and they will just tell us about the forecasting. They will just tell us about the traffic. On the news, they will just tell us about new development going on. I would like to turn on the television one day and they say all of the congressional men and women are out throughout the United States. They're calling, they're finding out who needs what? How can they better improve? They've gone to live in the ghettos. They've gone to live in the projects for a while. They've gone to spend time to talk to people and understand who our people truly are. Where are the destitution situation? Where are those who are most desperately in need of assistance from the leadership of this country? I would love to see that. That would 
can even be better news. A war on poverty, a war on homelessness, a war on destitution, a war on debt. But no. Our media has the worst type of stories and every single night there's breaking news. The biggest story these days, which started back on the 7th of this month, you had power gliders invading through the air and then you had some kind of sea maneuver and then the ground they were breaking through the fences. And supposedly they went all the way 50, 60 miles into the, the homeland and they committed atrocities. Whilst you are one of the strongest forces in the entire world, you have enabled all of this to take place and everybody is supposed to be completely baffled and surprised by this type of attack, this type of situation. Because when this took place, they also took a lot of hostages. And supposedly the amount goes up too. It started off at 50, now it's at, then it went up to 100, then to 150 amount of hostages. Same thing for the casualties. They go up. 300, and 400, and 500, and 600, and the media is getting more and more out there. And of course, those who are presenting it, unless they're out in the field, you see them dress really well. Like, wow, these people are doing a really good job. You know, the, the office is really everything. And similarly to, to Ukraine, and this is a massacre, obviously, taking people out of their, innocent people, civilians out of their homes, it's just like anybody walking into a your home and take it over, it's unacceptable. But similarly to Ukraine, when you have a superior force invade, you say to yourself, how is it that all of the world technology and order that you're still allowing this type of thing to even take place? And so let us understand the dynamics of thinking. Let us understand the process of how people really are thinking. How have people been thinking of warfare? You have the most innocent people have no idea what warfare is about. They should not even be involved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تُقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِّسَاءِ وَالْبِلْدَانِ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجُنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةِ الظَّالِمِ بِأَهْلِهَا You are not to attack those who are weak. من الرجال of the men, والنساء and the women, والبلدان الذين يقولون ربنا أخرجنا من هذه القرية الظالم أهلها And even those who are saying they're weak and they're saying oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are of the Islam. They're saying, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get us out of this city that is already doomed itself. And you're still bombing and bombing and bombing. Because you are afraid to go into tunnels. Because you are afraid of what might be waiting for you on the inside, you have to continue to bomb. In fact, you bombed more than the amount of time the United States bombed in its war on terror in Afghanistan in one day we bombed more in two. Where is the psychology of this? Those who think that it is okay from a distance to send a rocket, a missile, and bomb, that is much more acceptable than doing it with a knife. You are sadly mistaken. Killing is killing innocent civilians. Be very careful, my beloved siblings in Islam. Let us see the facade. Where did this hate even start against one another? What is the purpose? of going into a population of 2 million whilst your own people are in bed with them and you are bombing them. The international community says, wait a second. They're innocent lives there. You're cutting off humanitarian resources. You have women who, are, who have just given babies. The babies are in the, in the incubators. We Muslims, we're supposed to feel that. We're supposed to say, Alhamdulillah, that we're not in that. But we're supposed to say, MashaAllah, and grieve for those who are in that position. 
We have to have the mindset of a true believer. We have to have the inclination of a true submitter, a true slave and servant of Allah and Allah alone. The media keeps telling, this is the headline, they keep going on with such stories. And then you find out that there's a bigger story right here in America, there's a mass shooter going around. They've been trying to track him going into the third day now. And by the way, those of us who are Muslim are just glad that this shooter is not profiled as a Gazan or as a Hamasian, a jihadist or something. We're happy about that. So then we say, let's find out what it is about this individual, Card. I believe that's his name, Card. And they say, you know this individual was hearing voices? You know this individual has military experience? Do you know that this individual said that they would blow up a few American assets? Is that a Caucasian or a black? No, that's a Caucasian individual. Oh boy. Let's say that that individual also has mental health issues. That individual had girlfriend problems, and this might have started it. This is, so this could have been prevented had his girlfriend kept him. Are we happy to find out the root of our mass shooting? It's either about, it's always to do with some form of worldly possession, some relationship here, some money there, some entertaining factor that was seen on television. In fact, now you have rock pop stars they rap so much and they realize that, you know, I'm not rapping what I actually live. So I have to live this rap. And so they go and they establish a rap sheet. And as it's coming out in the newspaper, in the headline, you're hearing it on the news, you hear it in their song and they say, see, we told you we did that. So more of them are going down because of it. And what is the reason? Think about it, my beloved siblings in Islam. Before I say too much, I will say this little. There is not a single asset. There's not a single commodity. There's not a single component that is more expensive and more treasured than information, education. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the best Prophet to the best ambassador Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, the best message, the best source of education, which is Quran. The moment we accept that and we abide and we hold on, we held on to the rope of Allah that connects us to Him, and we're not able to do so properly unless we do so sincerely. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts and only accepts the deeds that are sincere. My beloved siblings in Islam, think carefully about where this mass media content that we are abiding by. Today our society abides by the content which is put on the outlet. Where are we getting it from? How we are thinking we're getting it from the outlet. As long as we are not abiding, and look how pure the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس. There is not much good in what these non-believers, these mushrikeen, these kuffar, what they assemble for. So now, let's look at the best assembly the world knows today, known as the General Assembly. The United Nations consists of 193 nations. The Security Council, five members, Russia, China, America, United, uh, France, Britain. How is it that all of these nations can 
cannot stop one nation from invading another. In fact, they mean about it so much that what kind of weapons are you going to send? What kind of sanctions are they going to be? So much. And in the meantime, the superior nation is just thrashing the smaller nation. La hayra fi kathirin min nadwahum. There's not much goodness of what it is that they assemble for. Likewise, you have, what is it, Israel against who? Palestinians, you don't know. Hamas, I don't know. Arabs, I don't know. Islam, I don't know. Real confusing. They really should say Israel's war on terror, since they want to say so much about like 9-11. America's war on terror, this should be Israel's war on terror too. But we got it a little confused. We're not sure. We're not sure. Is it really Israel? Wants to eliminate Hamas? Hamas is in more than just the, 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 the strip, the Gaza Strip. In fact, you are negotiating with Hamas in Qatar. You are negotiating with Hamas in Egypt. You are saying you're going to eradicate Hamas or what? What is the story? To make a long story short, you drop so many bombs, you created a humanitarian catastrophe. And all of these nations cannot come up with a statement that's acceptable for everyone to bring peace. This should be a wake-up call for us. Just like our Congress go through all of these congressional hearings just to get one law passed. That's what we have come to. We cannot say to ourselves that we are Muslim and not look at the best source of information and not be satisfied with it. We have to adopt the mind thinking and the sensation of the believer. That is contentment no matter how small, no matter how minimal there is, because we only live in one day. Yesterday we lived it, it's gone. Tomorrow is not promised to us the day of, 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 of judgment is. We don't know if we're going to wake up in the morning, alhamdulillah, if we do. But we need to be prepared to say, Allah, if we don't. And Israel, Going into Gaza does not even benefit Israel anymore. That's the sad part about it. One who understands psychological warfare and know that these people love the world so much so they value it to where they worship it, to where if somebody is caught of them, they cannot stop thinking if I am caught too. So if I go in and then I'm caught, I'll be in that predicament. And do not forget the worldly possessions and the desire to have more of them is simple greed. If I want more worldly possessions, I'm not going to be very inclined to make sacrifices on them. One of the first things I will not think about sacrificing myself is me, my own freedom. Secondly, obviously you have enough family members you have enough international pressure to say, get the hostages out first. You don't even know what's in there. The power gliders, they could be something else too. Not only that, will this really prevent future violence? Isn't that what they're trying to do? They're trying to live as a peaceful people. And you have those who say to themselves, we are Israel's friends because Israel is in the Bible. Who said the state that you know today in the Middle East, the one that is occupying Palestinian, who said that is the Israel in the Bible? Who said that? Where do you get that conclusion from? Especially if the Bible is, goes back 3,000 years and this state was just created a hundred, well, the state is not even a hundred years old. Who said this is the state the Bible is talking about? Do you know how this state even created? In the Bible, does it even say the state of Israel? 
or the people of Israel. You and I have to be better guys. We have to be calling the people, calling ourselves most importantly to that in which is pleasing to Allah will give us some gratitude in this life and the hereafter. The one who knows the declaration of faith understands its meaning, gives it its due right, lives upon it, explores its wonders, will have the shield of it in the grave and beyond, insha'Allah. The shahada to Allah, ilaha illallah, not associating any with Allah, counting and relying in Allah and Allah alone. This is the way the believer is, and therefore, when confronting the adversary, we believers look forward to the gratitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the shahada, the martyr. This is first what the shahada used to look forward to, martyrdom at the hands of the enemies of Allah. Because they rejected the message of Allah. This is what we want first. We have sacrificed our blood, our sweat, our tears. For the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Jannah. Inna Allah hashkara min al-mu'mineen anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emboldened with the piety he gave to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those who aided and assisted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My beloved siblings in Islam, let us hold firm to the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us organize accordingly and let us act with diligence as well as with sincerity. Let us not abandon the piety in the word or in the deed. And let us realize that there are 70 odd branches of faith. And the greatest of them is saying, La ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because there is no better calling, there is no better service that our lips, our tongues, our minds, our hearts can be in, then calling for Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحَا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ There is nothing better than calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying that we have submitted to Allah. قُلْ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْلِمُ